Welcome to the Buck Brief. Ryan Gerdusky is in the mix. He is the author of the National Populist Newsletter, a guy who follows all the political stuff so closely, so insightful. Also, uh, he is an author, and I'm going to make him write another book soon because his last one was very good. Mr. Gerdusky, good to see you. Thanks for having me. So, Biden, it's all he was talking about. This is post-debate. Now the debate was a disaster. You got Clyburn coming out saying you can't just go around Kamala. They won't stand for that. Where are you on all this? Like, how does this play out? What happens with the Democrat Party and the ticket? I mean, I think that there's no way to avoid Biden being the nominee because only he can choose to leave. You know, you saw like Bill O'Reilly, a man I don't dislike at all, but you have him saying, oh, there's there's the agreement. Obama called him. That didn't take place like that. Like that didn't happen. Um, Obama is not even that close to Biden anymore and hasn't been for some time. I think that um, there's no one who can choose for Biden to lead besides Biden. And he is very stubborn. He's an older man. His family is very supportive of him staying. Um, and at this point in the nomination process, given that we are four months until early voting starts, I keep asking what Democrat besides Kamala would want it. If you are a Josh Shapiro, a Wes Moore, a Gavin Newsom, a, you know, whomever, Gretchen Whitmer, and you are a Democrat on the rise. Yeah. You have a substantial, substantial chance of being in the this, this is taking over. The, this is taking over the captaincy of a ship that is just about to sink. <laughs> that is just- right. And if it fails, if you lose, your nomination chance is over in 2028 and you look like a backstabber. And is there an MSNBC job waiting for you? You know, what is there waiting for you? Uh, what's the use of being Tim Kaine, but you have term limits? So I don't I don't know if that's, I don't see any really potential chance, unless Kamala. Kamala really wants it, and she is the vice president, and she is the legitimate person to take over if he steps down. But I don't think he's stepping down. I just have a hunch that his family and he really want to win. And also, by the way, the people around Biden, the consultants on the campaign, there is no guarantee that they would get a job, let's say Kamala runs and wins or right. whoever, or whatever. There's no guarantee that those same people will get a job again in a set, in a new Kamala White House or a Gretchen Whitmer White House or a Gavin Newsom White House. So that if that's the case, the consultants around him are saying, no, stay, 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 because at least they keep their jobs for however long that is. If you're an ad purchaser for the campaign, you get three to six percent for all ad buys. You're talking, you know, millions of dollars on the line for you. Uh, there's no reason for the people around him to say, go. Oh, you know, they don't. I mean, that's just no reason. Yeah, I, I also wonder what, what happens to all the money that has been raised for Biden and Harris up to this point, like for that ticket, if you were to not do Biden Harris, but I agree with you totally, by the way, it's not like there's a good option that is Kamala Harris that people should consider as Democrats. The VP is the option. I I keep, I keep pounding this point for everybody. You have a vice president so that if you have a president who is not of sound mind or has a heart attack or whatever, steps into the role like the job of vp is on deck circle and all these people talk (laughs) about you know all these people keep talking about well we're gonna get rid of biden somehow how who knows and push aside the on deck circle lady with some other person who to your point is going to want the job i've been saying that too by the way because trump is looking like an unstoppable force right now uh and right and also could unify the party right and 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 it is clearly better than biden I'm going to try to make a sports analogy in between the two of us. That's very, no one's yeah. going to understand what we're saying, but it's like the pitcher who comes in at the ninth inning of a baseball game. And you're saying, no, 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 we're not going to put that guy in. Who's been training it. We're going to find the guy in the fourth row, just sitting there eating a hot dog. And he'll be the pitcher in the ninth inning to save the game. Uh, no, that's not how it works. It's the person that's been training for it. That's going to be the guy that saves the team in the end. And that is Kamala Harris. And, you know, Clyburn said that they would not stand for Kamala stepping down. Um, And now there's two Democrats who are sitting in office who have called for Biden to step aside, both from Texas, both in non-swing districts. I suspect that number will be growing. But look how many Republicans call for Trump to step down in 2016. A ton. Paul Ryan, John McCain, elders of the party, people with a lot of say. Uh, Ryan's previous said you're going to lose if you stay on. He was the head of the party and he still refused to step down. 
So I think there is precedent, recent precedent for a member of a party, even if they're in trouble to say, no, I'm staying and uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, I, now I want to get to the next question because you and I see this, and by the way, we've been very consistent on this. I, I've been having you on the podcast like every month to at least remind everyone that there have been two people along who have said, it's not going to be Michelle Obama. It's not going to be Gretchen <laughs> Whitmer. It's not going to be Gavin New. Like all these theories that all my conservative brothers and sisters in the media have just been been pounding for months i'm like it is crazy talk crazy yeah. talk um yeah but it's but not gonna be michelle obama. it's not gonna be michelle obama i can't well, first of all michelle obama she doesn't want to be a completely legitimate political opponent to donald trump meaning that he gets to say you know what i mean like i she she's she is worth like a hundred million dollars basically now she gets she makes the, like a gajillion dollars an hour selling cookbooks and right. being a celebrity and going to uh, France in the summer. Why would you get, she doesn't want, she doesn't, she didn't want Obama to do it. This, this is what I'm just, saying. This idea that Michelle Obama is going to like swoop in to save the Democrat party. This is crazy. She, she yeah. would have to be insane. Cause first of all, there's already polling that shows. It's not like she enters and she's up on Trump 10 points. Trump's actually ahead of her in the polls that have been run on this one. So if it's even a close race, she's going to have to be now. I know maybe they could change that. But I'm just saying she would have to actually run. She'd have to actually debate. And she would be, for the first time, legitimate subject of direct criticism from Trump, who, let's just be honest, will really insult people. Right. Like he will say whatever he wants. Right. And I don't think that. And also, Obama doesn't want to go from being the president to being the first gentleman. Yeah. Like what a downgrade that is. I mean, he's not Bill Clinton and she's not Hillary. Hillary for as much as people disliked her, she has a she had a legitimate political career of her own that was as long, if not longer, than Bill's. When you really think about it, um, and she always was gunning for it. Michelle has pushed to stay out of the limelight outside of the DNC convention and a few fundraisers every chance she can. She has no interest in politics, and the obsession. It's like it's like Republicans know five Democrat people in the media, like five Democrats total, and they just have to recycle those names over and over and over again because that's the only names I've ever heard before. Yeah, well, I mean, I used to hear this, for example, about Oprah. People would say, well, if Oprah ran, like, she would win and she would unite the country. She'd win by 20 points. Or, like, Oprah doesn't want to, like, she's not going to run for president, folks. Like, I, I, it's not <laughs> happening. She's a multi-billionaire who does. I think it's really hard for people to understand. If you're somebody who is used to being beloved, worth billions of dollars and doing exactly what you want, running in a yeah. presidential campaign does not sound like fun. Does not sound yeah, like how yeah. you want to spend your time. So anyway, uh, that, that's we'll, we'll we'll come back to this. Wait, the question I have for you, but I, I have to have a word from our sponsor. The question I have for you, though, to think about, uh, Ryan, is, okay, so can Biden win? Can Kamala win? If so, how? We'll get to that in a second. But if you had a million dollars in 2009, it'd be worth less than $700,000 today. That's the effect that out-of-control government spending has on your hard-earned dollars. That's why central banks and savvy investors are buying gold. For thousands of years, gold has withstood war, famine, and economic downturns. It has been a stalwart hedge against inflation and hyperinflation. The company that I trust to help you diversify into gold is Birch Gold Group. For over 20 years, Birch Gold has helped concerned Americans convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in physical gold. And the best part? It doesn't cost you a penny out of pocket. With an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and tens of thousands of happy customers, you can trust Birch Gold, too. To learn more, text the word BUCK to 989898 and get a free, no-obligation info kit on gold. Again, from your phone, text B-U-C-K to 989898 to protect your hard-earned savings today. All right, Ryan, let's start with Biden. Not will he, but realistically, can he still win? Yeah, I mean, he probably has maybe a 25% chance of winning at this point. I have to draw an inside straight from New Nebraska's second congressional, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. That's really his, and he has, has to keep Virginia, New Hampshire, and Minnesota. If he can do that, he can win. That is, I think, the easiest, simplest, and most likely scenario if he wins, what happens. But the new, did you see the new internal polling that leaked for the Democrats? Yeah, yeah, thing? of course. Yeah, from, from that was, yeah. Um, Biden's losing Pennsylvania by seven in their internals. That is, he's losing Virginia. He's losing New Hampshire. He's losing, uh, he's tied in New Mexico. That is wild. I know that polling firm, they're not that 
great in my opinion. They're not a wonderful polling firm, but that's the internal polls for Democrats. So the five alarm fire must be intense if that's what they're doing. And it's kind of like, I mean, if you were political in 2008, you remember like uh, the fall of 2008 where McCain pulled out of Pennsylvania and McCain pulled, McCain's map kept on narrowing and narrowing and narrowing. And I mean, it was at the beginning of the year where, where, or I said the spring of this year where you saw Biden pulling out of Florida, Texas, and North Carolina um, just to defend his states. And, you know, he's got plenty of money still, but it's not out of this question where you see the campaigns are pulling out of Georgia, um, maybe in Nevada, um, and just circling the wagons on a few handful of states left. Um, and, and Kamala... Would, would, would Kamala have to basically approach it in terms of the map, the electoral map, in the same way? Or do you think she opens up some different possibilities, Georgia, something like that? Uh, she probably opens up the possibilities of voters who think that Biden is too old and they may not be voting for Trump, but they could be voting for RFK or not voting at all. Um, she's not part likable, but she does make the map, map like a little better for for Democrats. I could see maybe um, some lean Democrat states that Democrats are starting to become concerned about move back into the Democratic column. Uh, but that's really it. I don't think she's going to do ra radically better in Georgia, radically better in Arizona um, or or North Carolina. I think that it's basically the same map both ways. You, you've been a, a political consultant before, Ryan. If somebody said to, you, said to you, if you get this right, you get $10 million, okay? That's like, that's the, the premise we're working on. You get a check for $10 million. You have to pick who can win, and, and then if they win, you know, you get your check. Kamala or Biden, who would you pick, right? I mean, if, if you were, if you had it all on the line, Kamala or Biden uh, to, to win at this point against Republicans? I pick Biden still. That is really I funny because so would I. I. Clay and I just went over this on the radio. Would he would go Kamala. Um, yeah. I think exposure, bigger exposure to Kamala makes her more annoying. She is a woman and Americans have not had a great track record of electing women to office. Um, and I think she is wildly unappealing to uh, white working class voters in a way that Biden isn't. And he is just, they're off put by the dementia aspect or the cognitive decline, but they're not necessarily opposed to him or they hate him. They, they don't they don't dislike him like they, the way they disliked Hillary or the way they would dislike Kamala. Uh, I want to ask you about the latest out of the White House in a second, their newest advisor. But first up, uh, a good friend of mine and, uh, and a former business partner did something really interesting. His name's Porter Stansberry. He's a multimillionaire. He's built probably the most successful financial publishing country uh, company rather in the country. Um, and he did something a lot of people consider crazy. He cut his salary to one dollar. Why would he why would he cut his own salary to a dollar? Well, he says he's found a much better way to save and get paid. Porter says there's essentially a new form of money in America making some people very rich. In fact, many of the richest people in America already use it. It's not gold or Bitcoin. Porter says what's interesting is that while every American is legally entitled to use this secret currency, few know much about it. But now Porter's hoping to change that. He says the way our government is destroying the U.S. dollar, it's critical to understand how America's new money works. He believes the most critical way to protect and grow wealth in the years to come as the dollar collapses is to use this secret currency. I strongly recommend you check out Porter's latest detailed presentation online at secretcurrency2024.com. He details how to protect and grow your wealth in the years to come using America's new money. I doubt you'll see this idea or opportunity discussed anywhere else. Check it out for yourself. Secretcurrency2024.com. That's secretcurrency2024.com. Uh, Ryan, Hunter Biden is brought into senior White House meetings now and is advising Joe Biden. People in the White House are saying, what the hell is going on? What is going on? <laughs> like, that's actually crazy, even for Joe Biden. Um, I mean, he's a trusted person around him and he's allegedly sober now. And uh, I don't know. I mean, listen, it's we our last president depended a lot on his son in law, his Democrat son in law to get some stuff done. So is it any is it any different than having your former crack addicted son in law sit there? And I mean, yeah, it's a little different, but it's, it's a little it's a little it's a little different. different. It's a little, it's it's a little, little different, different. But listen. R JFK depended on RFK. I mean, a lot of people bring the family in. Um, and I'm sure at this point, Joe Biden probably doesn't trust many people left. And um, especially yeah. if you see your 
your party turning on you, you're bringing, you're getting closer and closer to your family. Um, and, uh, and yeah. And I think how, how are you feeling? How does the Biden, the Biden debacle, let's assume it is Biden. Do you see that having a major effect on other races down ballot, uh, down ballot? Races, oh yeah. For example? Oh, like if you're, if you're the Democrat from Illinois 17, which is a, which was gerrymandered beyond belief, um, yeah, you must be, you must be, you know, not sleeping at night. I was going to say something more crude, but yeah, you can't be sleeping at night. If you're in Georgia's second in Sanford's district, which is a black rural district, you must not be sleeping at night. North Carolina's first congressional. Um, there are a ton of swing Democrat seats. And more importantly is, I mean, if, if this, like, there's two questions. Majorities are made not in red states, but in blue states in the House, right? All the people saying move out of blue states, move out of blue states. Majorities are made for Republicans and from Republicans in blue states. So if Trump loses California by 24 points instead of 30 points, right? Let's say there's a six point swing in California, which would be monumental biggest swing for a Republican in decades. Mike Garcia in, in uh, I think, the 27th district is going to be probably fine. Uh, Durante and the and the entire central um, Central Valley Republicans will be fine. Orange County Republicans will be fine. And maybe there's a chance to pick up a seat or two in California. New York, if Long Island is as almost as red for Trump as it was for Zeldin, well, then does New York three? Is it in play again? Is New York four? OK, what happens upstate is Maryland's sixth congressional district, which is the panhandle of Maryland and one city. Is that in play? There become big questions over lean Democrat seats that were supposed to be, you know, not only protected, but in better shape during swing elections. New Hampshire's first, New Hampshire's second, Maine second, Connecticut's fifth, Rhode Island's second. You know, when we're talking about these six, seven point swings, when Virginia's, you know, going Republican in the internals of the Democratic Party, well, there are two empty seats in Virginia, Virginia's seventh and I think Virginia's fifth as not fifth seventh and something or else and the second district is supposed to be a swing district and i saw the internals from the republicans and i think the republicans up nine so you see this this massive movement of lean democrat seats that were gerrymandered to be okay and and to be fine in case of a trump nomination um and they should absolutely be worried uh yvette herrera in in may in um, new mexico's second district would look like she would win her seat and then in the senate um, yeah, I mean, I, I think if you're Hovde, Hovde or whatever his name is in Wisconsin, Hovde? Yeah. certainly Hovde, if you're Hovde in Wisconsin, you've got to be feeling pretty good right now. If you're, uh, if you're in the open Michigan seat, I think it's Mike Rogers. You have to be sitting there and saying it's very good right now. Um, most, the reason Republicans are underperforming Trump is because of two reasons. One, there may be an ascension, uh, like a rise of support among black and Hispanic and Asian voters. And they could be like white voters from 40 years ago where they loved Reagan, they loved Nixon, but they still voted Democrat down ballot. That could possibly be happening. Another thing could be that they just have lower name ID. So they just don't know who these people are yet. And maybe Trump will bring them along the way. There's only two Senate candidates with almost universal name ID who are Republicans who are not in the Senate, and that's Larry Hogan and Kerry Lake. So we'll see, and both have obstacles for different reasons um, in winning either one of their states. So we'll see what goes on with them. You think Carrie Lake's going to win? If the Democrat internal, which has Trump up by 10 in Arizona, maybe. I mean, I thought Arizona was maybe a four or five point state for Trump. Um, and in that case, Trump would win and Carrie mm -hmm. Lake would lose. If tr Trump wins Arizona by 10, he might be able to drag her along the line. As of now, I still don't think Carrie Lake's going to win. I've never seen any indications saying Carrie Lake's going to win. Um, but... If uh, if Trump's able to sit there and drag 10 points in Arizona, then yeah, then Kerry Lake could possibly win. But I still I would still venture on the side of no. I would be more concerned if you're the Democrat in Nevada, the Democrat in Michigan, the Democrat in Pennsylvania, even um, then. And I, I think that's a All long right. shot, Pennsylvania. But those states then uh, then open up to a real opportunity. All right. Well, Mr. Godowski, thank you. Uh, we'll have you back on after the RNC to kind of revisit all of this. And in the yeah. meantime, go subscribe to the National Populist Newsletter on Substack, which is Ryan's. Ryan, thank you Thanks, so much. Bye.